for your success. If you lose balance, you lose power. You get that. Obviously, if I'm working too hard or I'm doing this too hard, this, that, you actually get tired. So when you get home, you just want to lie on the bed and then back to work. But if you build balance into your life, you will always have nice energy to step into your day. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about having money to go on a holiday. I'm talking about in your lunch break, take off your shoes, go and walk in the grass. Take your hour, walk in the grass, have a little picnic somewhere. I'm talking about, hey, sometimes be authentic. When you've got peer pressure to go out or do something and you actually just want to chill, be authentic and do it. You can listen to your body's intuition. Its wisdom will tell you when you need balance. And when you, do, when you need balance, it will even nudge you and get you a little flu going. To show you, you need balance. You need rest. Listen to your body. It's wise. Balance is essential. Balance in your personal and professional life. In giving and receiving. In love. So, when I say balance here too, let's just say you owe someone a thousand rand, right? You don't have the money to give it to them. So normally we just disappear. Oh shit, it's the which we ignored. No. So when I say clean your desk, it's a metaphor for life. Find the guy up and say, hey, I can only afford 50 rand, 20 rand, 10 rand. But be the commitment and offer him to pay him every month. If he tells you to piss off, well that's at least you are being that. You're cleaning your desk, you can <coughs> compete with your life. Because when you're incomplete with that money that you own, you walk around dragging it around with you. So where in your life is the other clutter in your life, the emotional clutter that you're dragging along too? Where in your life do you think someone else did something to you? Where in your life is something not going right? Get rid of that emotional clutter. It brings you down. When your emotional clutter in your head Get rid of inconvenient uh, commitments that you have. Let's just say every Sunday you go to the family's bar and you actually just don't want to do it. Relook at your schedule, create balance, your emotional clutter, your financial balance. Have a look at that. Friends that don't serve you, same thing. So the time that you do get off of balance, you're jumping into a crowd that just wants to be chaos. You understand? That's not going to be balance for you. Before you know it, it's going to catch up again. So have a look in your whole life. Where can I balance and unclutter? Remember I told you about uh, the crazy horse, the, the Indian guy? So the community brings balance into it. You remember he did exceptionally well. He came back and he had to give his best <laughs> position away for being the hero of the knot. They do that so that they create a synchronicity, a balance in the community. Not just in your personal life. Look at it beyond that too. Get complete. Empty your mind so it's ready for anything. So I, I also teach uh, sports teams. And a lot of times I uh, deal with kickers. They place kick to poles. And the first thing that we discover is that you can't, you can't, you can't hit a ball with the head on top of a head. You can't kick a ball with the head on top of the head. In other words, if your principle of kicking is one step forward, one step forward, and sweet timing, kick, visual gone. But if you worried about the game before the last kick that you did, you missed it. You've got a head on top of the head. You get here, you're so complete, you missed, you forget all the tactics that we taught you during the week. Your mind has been sabotaged by your thinking back then. You can't live life with a head on top of a head. You will never get the sweet tip. You will never get the sweet tip. You won't get anything. <laughs> Clear your mind. You get that. It's essential. And so many sports teams and individuals fail because they live on their past and they don't focus on the five that they got over. They focus on the last kick of the game that they missed. Where do you focus in your life? On the good stuff or the bad stuff? I can give us three, I can give us a piece of paper now and say, name me the three best things of this retreat so far and the three absolutely shittest things of the retreat. We write them down. Remember I told you about the people having the exact same reality and at the end of the day, one can say it's shit, one can say it's beautiful. What if now uh, you only took the three great things and you focused on that for the rest of the retreat? What would happen? Would your retreat get better? 
Would, would, it, would it attract more love, abundance, more joy? Would it? Or, let's take the three there, why on earth would we make that wrong and attract that? Guess what time you're about to have? That energy. You choose. Everywhere in life, when we leave these retreats, you will find adversity in your life. It's not going away. It's about learning to be a peaceful dwelling amongst winter, summer, spring, autumn. You aren't water spring, you understand? Let's let it go. Focus on what your masterpiece is, who you want to be as a person. You do that, you become it. And when you become it, you attract it. <coughs> Even in business. Life starts bending providence in your favor. In all sorts of ways that you have no idea. We do a trick later on. So get complete, empty your mind. I told you that. But we do a thing in Hojo and in Goa. Remember the Japanese martial arts sword fighting? And uh, you'll find there, you're going to watch yourself. When people want to look good, act strong and fit in, they do things that are unauthentic. Right. So, now, a lot of times in this particular exercise, you'll come into the circle. All our friends are surrounded by it. And now it's about striking the stick, the sword sweet. You get a father-son exercise, right? And when you want to look good and fit in, it's all in the head trying to hit this thing hard. Your feedback from the group when you do that, out of 10, we say, give you a 10 finger B, feedback will be five. And you're like, no, 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 I smack that thing. But when you're able to tap into a different place and not use force, you actually gain power. You remember I told you about that acorn in the ground? It's got nothing in it. There's nothing in it. Six story building. Do you think human beings are part of that energy? Do you think we're part of that visible energy? Of course we are. That invisible energy that created that acorn? We are part of that. So I'm going to teach you later on in the retreat how to tap into your core power versus in your head. There is a massive difference. That's how you bring out the line in you. You live from your heart versus your head. When you try and use power, you lose force. Think about leadership. Think about it. Anyway, if you force and, and use power, you lose respect from your people. It's the same in relationships. It's in the same with your relationship to life as well. <clears throat> <coughs> I, I say I say balance here you, you need to get what other people are going through my hope and joy is by the end of this retreat that there's possibly a consciousness shift which means that you view life through a new set of eyes until such time as that conscious shift does not happen whoever you're dealing with in life is unconscious so you can't make them wrong. Do you understand this? They don't have the seeing and the ability that you're getting. So on face value, you know beyond that, this person is actually beautiful. But his conditioning, how he is brought up from his dad, his aunt, his schooling, everything is what he is. So I'm saying to you, soft the gloves with people. You know, just sometimes listening is such a great thing. You know, we've all wanted someone to speak to. We've all wanted a group hug every now and again. That balance is essential. <clears throat> so, I'm saying to you, think about it. When last was the best time you've had? Why is it when we always ask these questions, it's when I was a child, you know? I remember going to this and jumping off this and doing that. What about right now? <laughs> Why not have the best time of your life right now? Because we're adults. They say adults are only deteriorated children. You get that? <laughs> and if you think about it, I think it's spot on. Right? Because our conditioning makes us build into fear and we lose the child in us. Remember the day, well, I remember me naked in the sprinkler with the feather, you know, the neighbors all around, how is it not giving you? I wouldn't dare do that now. <laughs> I'm not saying that's the best time of my life, but we lose the child in us. That child is your authentic self. That's your truth. 
You know how many times you actually want to say something, but you keep it back, or you, 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 you live with the broomstick up your back, doing the right thing, etc., etc. Then you wonder why I don't have a spark in mind, because you're living an unauthentic life versus being authentic. <clears throat> I told you about that guy, remember the... So, I lost my daughter at three years old to um, her mom. <clears throat> That's how I lost her. I was working and I got home and they were gone. My daughter was everything to me, she still is. And it literally broke me. I was the breadwinner, working every day, packing their sandwiches, taking them to school. And I went to high court and I lost. Doesn't matter about the details. I was heartbroken. I came to Rishikesh. Someone told me about a guru that could help me with regard to my pain. You know, as a, as a, as a parent, you want to like, teach your child what you know in life. I didn't have this opportunity. And so every time I see her, I get a girl that is exactly nothing to do with dad's influence at all. Now, if you're a daddy and that's your, if, you're, if your big thing is to be the best daddy in the world and you can't even do that, it's so painful. And I know we all have kids and we also have situations like that, right? Painful. And to come home and she's gone and all she wanted is daddy all the time and I, the same vice versa, the energy broke me. I resigned from my job in, in, in Joburg, great job earning lots of bucks and I moved to Cape Town because I needed to be with her. <clears throat> and I was searching, I thought, shit man, why does this happen to me? This is so painful. I came here, walked up the mountain, did like a hike up the mountain. These guys told me where this guru was that could help me in these particular relationships. I got to him, checked across the world to get to him and I told him my story and he burst out laughing. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. And I'm like, don't breathe, don't do this, you're kidding me. I'm on edge, I'm shattered, please help me, I have a broken heart, please help me. He starts rolling over laughing even more. And he said to me, my friend, if you think that you have anything to do with her consciousness and her journey, you are very mistaken. He said, by the time your daughter is six years old, she should already leave, the, leave your house and start a journey by herself. He said, every single one of us has this imprint in ourselves, our own journey. And that adversity that she might deal with, that's exactly her teaching for her and her individual thumbprint. You can't protect that journey. It's hers. Let go. All you need to be is the best daddy you can. Full stop. The outcome, let go. I said, no, you, you can't do this to a kid, little kids like this. Hello, India. I see my girls on the street, younger than my daughter, with nothing, that have got a spark in their eyes and happy. I'm like, you know what, he's actually right. He's actually right. How do these little girls survive in India? But smiling, happy. And I'm so concerned about my daughter, she's got a beautiful mommy, she's got a roof over her head, she's got a brother, she goes to school, and here's me thinking about me, I. It relieved so much. I, I came, he said to me, now you go now and you let your hair down. You sent me to Goa, where we're going tomorrow, and um, it was the Holly Festival. I just remember waking up the next morning, I had a speedo on my head in the sand, and I, I just... I, <laughs> Full of colors. I think I had this big priest next to me and God knows what, we were on the beach and uh, I just remember waking up feeling light and feeling content with that she has her journey, absolutely, you know, so where also in your life can you let go, might be someone passed away, you might have lost a boyfriend, this, that, that. Your child might be struggling too. You be the best you can for that person. Beyond that, beyond that, it's their teaching and their relationship to God to have their tea party, good pugs, and get them through whatever they go. As hard as it is, there's wisdom in the workings with all of this stuff. Let go.
if you, whatever you being, will affect that individual or that situation. So you choose to be love. It's the only thing you need to do. Stop worrying about getting in the thickness of something thin and carrying it around with you and attracting that. Remember, scientifically, they've taught you. If you're an energy that's angry, making wrong, pointing fingers, guess what you're going to attract? Exactly that. Those relationships. Corrupt people go and join join jobs. Guess what job? Guess what boss they end up with? A corrupt boss. <coughs> it's doing it to him as well. Do you see that? Who you being in life is what you become and get back. So who do you want to be in these disastrous circumstances that we everybody goes through, by the way? There's no perfection. You get that? What's perfect for me is a different perfect for you. So what is perfect? So, to get balance in your life, meditate for 20 minutes every day. If you're too busy, meditate for an hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, this what I'm sharing with you today has been around for centuries. The Greeks used to worship two gods. I told you, Apollo and Dionysus. Dionysus being a glut, sex, big, big steak, eating big uh, uh, roasts, big guy drinking, rah, 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 you know, the loud mouth is. Apollo was the perfect person, the right direction to the sun, the perfect time, everything absolutely perfect. They said the middle ground was God's music. So they served both of them. They served both gods. And because of that, it drew them into balance. So my point is, what I'm sharing with you has been discovered centuries ago. But we lose the basics of these principles. And yet they're so essential. Obviously, I've given you more layers on the word balance. So I invite you to incorporate this into your day into your masterpiece, into your relationship to life. Okay.